first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to join this uh, um, seminar discussions, which are, looks really interesting indeed. <clears throat> so I understand that your the theme running through this is about uh, well-being and the work-life balance clearly is a very a key element of that, because if the different elements, uh, different things are happening in our life are not in a sort of balance, and especially if we are overworked, that, as we all know, can be a, a, a source of anxieties and stress. Now, it's interesting to talk about this subject in the present times, very challenging times, because we've been forced into one of the most extraordinary experiments, and that has been, we've been forced to do remote working on, on a scale that would have been unimaginable. So what I want to explore with you are three key questions. First of all, has this experiment, and of course, I have to say, not everyone has been working from home, as we know. So this talk, in a sense, focuses very much on the office type of jobs, which have been, uh, um, which has been possible to, to do from home. Well, there are lots of workers who still had to um, operate in the front line in different ways. So, but let's focus on this particular uh, situation, which is quite extraordinary. And um, so well, I'd like to talk a little bit about that and thinking, offer, offer some reflections of how that might have uh, either helped people to perhaps rediscover their work-life balance or qu achieve quite the, op the opposite, make it really more, even more difficult and challenges. I think, of course, inevitably, we, we need to talk about the technology as well because the technology has been, again, key to this big experiment, enabling this very big experiment, and some reflections of the how much the technology is empowering house us, but how there is also the other side of the coin could be that is making work all pervasive. And finally, a few reflections about thinking about what might happen in the future. First of all, I also would like to make a, a premise here saying that I use the expression work-life balance because it's commonly understood, it's easy, um, but I'm not entirely happy with the concept that it conveys. It almost feels as if it, it introduces a false dichotomy between paid work and life. Paid work is very much part of our life, of our identity. Um, so it's not one thing against the other. Um, it's a question of, as I said before, trying to achieve some kind of balance or, or perhaps even harmony uh, um, about along, you know, uh, among all the different aspects of our life. And of course, this balance will be different depending on the life stage we are in. So that said, I will continue to use that expression because it's an easy one to do and it's, as I say, commonly understood. Now, as a, an academic, you know, we always like to talk about theories. Uh, and I don't want to bore anyone, but there is one which I will mention here, which is actually quite helpful in terms of helping us to make sense of exploring the first questions about how this um, working remotely, the fact that the office has come to the to our home, how we made sense of that, whether to what extent has been helping or, or not. Um, and it's, it's called the, the border crossing theory, but let, let's think about it as a helpful framework for both individuals and also employers who will have to reflect on how their, their staff, their, their colleagues are actually living through this, this extraordinary experiment. And what this, this framework suggests is that we are border crossing, uh, crossers and we make the daily transitions between the two worlds of family uh, of our own work, and I would say private life or family, but private life is much more inclusive. The identify the borders can be physical, temporal, and psychological. Now, reflecting a little bit about what this means, you know, the physical border, of course, with the, the office who has come to the uh, houses, to our home, we have no physical borders anymore, unless people, maybe people, some people have reconstructed those borders within their home by having a study, by doing the work in the garden shed. And how important it is to have that physical border. I'm, I'm trying to pose here some, some questions that people might want to reflect on. And of course, the temporal one as well. So the, the, the structured working day, nine to five, where you go to an office, 
well, at home, um, we can restructure things depending, you know, there will be some times when we all need to be online, but then we might have that as help individuals to gain some flexibility in terms of working more at their own pace um, when they don't, they want to do things or working in a different way. Uh, or on the other hand, it might have again have made you know, disrupted that structure that some people actually like to have that structure. And then the most complex, I think, is a psychological border, and that is always the case whether we work. Also, we work in an office. We, we even if we have those two other borders, a psychological border is is what could undermine our well-being if the work is always with us, is always on, on our mind. Likewise, you can argue if some of the uh, is other issues that are happening in your life are always you know, on your mind, then they, they can undermine that, um, your well-being as well. So these borders are also can be permeable, flexible, as you can see from the figures that are put there on the slides, depending on what's happening and, and we go back to this com concept of crossing. So depending how you cross those borders, how you organize those borders, they, they may vary. There is a lot, we, we, we are in control of, of crossing those borders. We are molding those borders, shaping the environment around us. It's really important that we keep ourselves in control. And I suppose there is also a role for employers and so not being shaped by, by the events. There is also a role from the employers who work in there with the colleagues and staff in terms of uh, ensuring that people remain in control of that border crossing and that border crossing is done in a productive way. Techno let's talk a little bit about technology, empowering or enslaving. Well, now I'm here, I'm in actually sitting in my, in my home and I'm joining you. I would have much preferred to join you at Blenheim, uh, the beautiful surrounding of Blenheim, but because of the work, the way the, or other commitments today, it's, um, it would have been difficult for me to come all the way to Blenheim. Um, so there are lots of advantages about working remotely. Um, you can do, you know, you can work at your own pace anywhere, um, do uh, work on even on the go. Um, and I think one of the key advantages of this is that it gives us a great sense of autonomy and control. And there is a lot of, there are lots of studies that show that this sense of autonomy and control is really important in terms of, um, especially in relation to our well-being and avoiding feeling stress is when you feel that you are not in control, that is what can determine, um, can be a cause of stress. However, we need to be very mindful of the disadvantages as well. And to a certain extent, we have already talked about the different barriers. I mean, this can be completely blurred because it, you could, uh, we could end up very easily in a situation where work is always with us. The email is a very good example. So, should we have a right to disconnect? Now, I think it's interesting I hear um, there are a couple of examples. Um, one from France, where they actually introduced a, even a law um, which requires company with more than 50 employees to um, draw up a code of conduct and setting the hours when staff can actually email one another or answer emails. Um, and the other examples is from a German company, and probably there are many more now that do that during the holidays, uh, people can completely disconnect. So you don't go back to that ghastly um, scenario where you end up with a lot of emails waiting for you in the, um, in the inbox. So I have made this point about, you know, the, the, the technology and the fact that, again, we can be in control and it's probably a good idea to think more how we um, we can use these devices that technology itself offers us. So let me go on to the fine, very final slide. More flexible working, better work-life balance. Well, flexible working, there has been discussion about it for a long time. Uh, there is a lot of flexible working already, but just a few more points. I mean, the, I, I believe that the working from home probably even after the pandemic, which we all hope it will end not before too long, um, they, I guess that there will be more flexible, more home working. And there are loads and loads of studies that have been done, which do show, as, as I said before, is this element of autonomy, 
people feeling more in control, which is quite important. And that could lead, lead uh, to greater productivity, less sickness, absences. Um, but also we have need to be mindful that not everybody will want to work in that way because for some people we have heard, we've seen a lot of articles on the press. Some have felt it very positive. Others, you know, they, they really miss the, uh, we have social animals. We, we need to socialize. We need, need to miss the environment in the office and miss also that kind of informal, um, not just exchanging ideas, but also learning from one another, that informal le learning that goes on in the office as well. Um, the Office of National Statistics has found that the commuter, we have seen in the press a lot of people seems to be buying in the countryside now, leaving the cities and the commuters, according to a survey, the, the Office of, for National Statistics did, uh, they seem to be more unhappy and anxious and, uh, than those who don't have to commute. So again, um, flexibility, there, there is already a lot of flexibility in the workplace. We also have legislation which allows people to, to uh, request to reduce their hours. It is important in a, way, in, in a lot of ways because it allows us, depending also, uh, meeting some of the demographic changes like a, an aging population, allowing people to work perhaps remain longer in the workplace, uh, meeting all those, those needs. Again, it helps with managing that balance throughout our life course, whether it is because we have caring responsibility, whether it is because we might want to slow down or whether it is because we want to do something different. Well, I think it would be interesting to see if the four hours a week comes back as a, as a, on, on the agenda. I've already seen quite an, an interest in the press about it. And there are some employers who, have, who are using it. One thing is that there will be less work around so the four hours a week could be a way for, um, not sorry, four hours a week, four days a week, four uh, hours that's a week. Quite, quite interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Three. Um, it could actually help in redistributing work, the work that around people. It, this has happened before. There has been companies who have done this in the past to avoid redundancies, for example. So it's not it's nothing new. And there are some that there seems to be a, a growing interest around that. But also we need to be mindful that the history of work, although sometimes it doesn't feel like that, because especially the technologies has intensified work, the history of work is about the reduction of working hours. Um, you know, the, the, the working day has been reduced significantly if we think what it was decades ago. Uh, but even the, the, the working week, you know, a lot of people used to work five days a week and that, uh, sorry, six days a week and that's now has reduced to, uh, is to five. So even if it doesn't feel that way, especially because of technology has intensified what we do, actually the history of work, if we look at it, tends to go uh, towards a reduction. So that will be interesting to see what we face with that agenda. The final point I want to leave you with is this idea of socially sustainable work. I mean, another thing that has been brought into focus by this pandemic, it has been how important the social infrastructure is, uh, especially when we went to lockdown, a lot of people who uh, had to shield and getting that social infrastructure mobilized in helping one another was so important. So the impact of the organization for work, of work is really important on individual lives, well-being, but also on the community and the well-being of the community and the wider society. And I, my final word is this, this pandemic is really terrible and we all we, you know, hoping that it will finish soon, but it's also a massive opportunity to really rethink how we do things and to engage with some real change, think outside of the box and be radical in the way we want to do, organize our life, our society and get something which is uh, which is different and possibly more more exciting. And I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that insightful talk and apologies for the technical problem. Not, not a problem. Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Simonetta, and hopefully we'll meet you in the flesh one day. Thank you. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Okay.